James Buchanan, the 15th president of the United States. A very controversial one too since his actions, or better lack of actions, led up to the Civil War, the bloodiest conflict in American history, leading many historians to label him as the worst president in the history of the United States. Hello everyone, welcome to Top 10 History, your hub for historical lists and amazing history facts. Today, we're going to go over the top 10 amazing facts about James Buchanan. Make sure to watch until number 1 because it's one of the most amazing facts about the president that may shock you. Before we begin, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on because we release a new historical top 10 list every single day. Also, make sure to smash that like button. Alright, let's get right into the video. Number 10. He was the only bachelor president. That's right. James Buchanan was the only president in the history of the United States who was single, never married. He was engaged to Anne C. Coleman when he was 28, but the wedding was called off for reasons that remain a mystery to this day. Shortly after the cancellation of their wedding, Coleman died, which is believed to be by suicide. It is also believed that Buchanan was the country's first homosexual president, which may have been part of the reason why his marriage to Anne C. Coleman was called off. However, this is only theory and the real reason to this day remains a mystery. Buchanan never married anyone after the fact and remains to this day the only United States president who was single and never got to experience living with a first lady in the White House. Number 9. His childhood home is now a hotel. James Buchanan was born and grew up in a small town of Mercerburg, Pennsylvania. Being that he was from the north but he had a southern democratic ideology, he was referred to as a doughface, which was the slang word that was used to describe citizens from the north who had southern beliefs and ideologies. Anyway, at the age of 16, Buchanan left his childhood home to attend Dickinson College. Since leaving his home, the home was transformed into the James Buchanan Hotel in Mercerburg, Pennsylvania, which you can rent out of room to this day. The home is preserved to still have the historical look, so that it appears as it did when Buchanan was a child. It was one of the town of Mercerburg's top tourist destinations. Also in Mercerburg, Buchanan's father opened and ran a store and was one of the most successful businessmen in Mercerburg. This store is now a pub that you can visit and grab yourself a drink and a bite to eat to this day. Number 8. He served in the War of 1812. Although James Buchanan was raised in a financially stable family and he attended college at a young age of 16, he still had a desire to join the military and serve his country. Buchanan studied law at Dickinson College and started his career as a lawyer. But not too long after starting this career, he enlisted in a reserve unit during the War of 1812 in order to help the US in their war against the British. In fact, he was the last US president to serve in the War of 1812. Also, he was the only president with military experience who was not an officer, he was only a private. Usually, a US president who has previously served in the military was some high-ranking officer with tons of military experience. It is quite unusual for a private who only served for a few years to become the leader of a country. When the British invaded Baltimore during the War of 1812, Buchanan was present as a member of the Pennsylvania militia and he helped defend the city. Number 7. He believed that owning slaves was a constitutional right. Now, we cannot mention this notorious president without mentioning slavery and the growing conflicts that surrounded that topic. As previously mentioned, Buchanan was a doughface, meaning that he was from the north but politically speaking, he supported the southern ideology. Following the Dred Scott case, which would determine if new American territories in the west would be allowed to practice slavery, the Supreme Court ruled that slaves were property of their masters and that the federal government did not have the right to ban the use of slaves in these new territories. Because of this decision, Buchanan used this ruling to claim that slavery was a constitutional right, as much of a right as the right to bear arms and freedom of speech. He believed that this ruling would be an end to the conflict of slavery. Little did he know, it would only lead to the bloodiest war in American history by the end of his presidency. Number 6. He ordered the capture and execution of John Brown. Now before we talk about this fact, we first need to talk about who John Brown is. John Brown was a failed businessman who arguably went insane following all of his failures. After his failed career, he dedicated his life to helping abolish slavery. He would lead abolitionists in political movements against slavery and became a key figure in the Underground Railroad. He would go as far as to kill pro-slavery settlers in the Western Territories, an event that would go on to be known as Bleeding Kansas. Later on, John Brown led a raid at an armory in Harper's Ferry and planned to steal the weapons inside to use against the South. In response to this raid, Buchanan himself ordered General Robert E. Lee and U.S. Marines to Harper's Ferry to capture Brown and his followers. Brown was charged with treason, murder, and conspiring with the enslaved, which led him to be hanged. 
Although justified since Brown was using violence to achieve his goals, Buchanan was very quick to put a stop to abolitionist movements such as this one. Number 5. He believed in the right to secession. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln would win the election and become the 16th president. Lincoln was a third party candidate and ended up winning by a landslide. Because of this, southern states felt that they were not being listened to and the election results were rigged against them. And they especially were not thrilled to have an abolitionist like Abraham Lincoln as the new commander in chief. As a result, quickly after Lincoln was elected, South Carolina declared secession and other southern states followed quickly after, forming the Confederate States of America. Buchanan, especially being the southern sympathizer that he is, declared that the states had the right to do this and that the federal government could not force any state to remain in the Union. At this time, the people were not loyal to the federal government, their true loyalty was with their state. However, with little redemption to Buchanan, he did try to avoid war between the northern and southern states at all costs. One example of this is that he made a truce that no federal Union troops would be stationed at Fort Pickens, Florida, as long as the Confederate Army did not attack the fort. Number 4. He was a key diplomat. Before James Buchanan was elected president, he had a pretty significant political career. He was often involved in foreign policy between the United States and other countries. As Buchanan was a huge supporter of Andrew Jackson during his presidency, as a reward for his loyalty, Jackson made Buchanan the minister to Russia in 1831. Then just over 20 years later under Franklin Pierce, he served as the minister to Great Britain from 1853 to 1856. Because of these roles, Buchanan spent a number of years overseas and played a large role in United States foreign policies during these times. Between the time he served as a minister for Russia and Great Britain, he served as a senator of Pennsylvania from 1834 to 1845, and he also served as the Secretary of State under James K. Polk in 1845. Number 3. He openly fought for slavery in new territories. When new territories were claimed by the US following the Louisiana Purchase, the debate was on the table whether the new land would be free states or slave states. As a result, the Kansas-Nebraska Act was put into place, which would allow the residents of these states to vote on whether to permit or outlaw slavery in these new territories. As a result, thousands of Americans from both sides moved to these territories in order to influence the vote, which inevitably led to violence, the most infamous case being Bleeding Kansas. Buchanan was not about letting the people decide though. As previously stated, he believed that owning slaves was a constitutional right. He fought strenuously for the Lee Compton Constitution, which would have officially made slavery illegal. However, this was not passed and territories ultimately voted whether slavery should be legal or not. The ending result turned in favor of the abolitionists. Number 2. He won the presidency. James Buchanan was an ambitious man. Becoming president was one of the goals of this ambition. At the time, there were many Democratic candidates that were running for office against the current president at the time, Millard Fillmore. However, it was an extremely difficult time in American history to run for office because there was so much controversy and ideological division throughout the nation. However, to his luck, James Buchanan was physically removed from all of the controversy since he was living abroad in Great Britain during all of the conflict. He served as the United States Minister to the United Kingdom. Since he was overseas and away from all of the conflict, to the American people he seemed to be the most neutral of all the candidates causing him to gain support from both sides. But what the people would soon find out is that he was an active supporter of slavery and believing that owning slaves was a constitutional right. Number 1. He Supported Abraham Lincoln you might think that James Buchanan, the president who supported slavery and secession, and Abraham Lincoln, the president who was anti-slavery and declared secession to be an illegitimate rebellion, would be polar opposites, right? Well, yes, they were polar opposites, absolutely. However, after Abraham Lincoln took over as the commander-in-chief, James Buchanan fully supported Lincoln's actions as president. Buchanan retired from politics altogether after his presidency, and he never tried to speak out against Lincoln, despite having a completely different ideology. After the Confederacy's attack on Fort Sumter, which was the official start of the Civil War, Buchanan fully supported the Union and Lincoln's actions during the war. He even talked about his thoughts about the war and Lincoln in his memoir, Mr. Buchanan's Administration on the Eve of Rebellion, where he defended Abraham Lincoln and his administration. For two presidents who seemed to be polar opposites during a time when the nation was the most divided in all of its history, it's quite admirable to see that the former president still had the current's back, a redeeming quality for a leader who did a lot of wrong during his presidency. 
Did these facts shock you? Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on more amazing historical facts and much more. If you like this video, check out this next video on the top 10 worst American presidents. Alright, have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.